Chris Duker for geeknerdnet.com, and I am very pleased to be joined by Wells Thompson. He is the co-writer uh, on Mechaton. It is on Kickstarter right now, and it goes until June 19th, uh, so you got to check this thing out. Uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about some past work that Wells has done, and like I said, he's the co-writer on the book, but he's also kind of co-everything on the book uh, when you've got a, you got a wicked team together, so Wells, welcome. Hi, good to be here. Great to have you, man. So listen, uh, we met, uh, like a lot of people meet, uh, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, people I don't think... meet anymore. This is the pre-post pandemic, all right? There are no physical in meetings, you know, yeah. there's no conventions anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's all exactly. through Twitter. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, I, like you know, Geek Nerd Net is all about creator own books, and I want you to talk about Mechaton. Uh, I read some of your Kickstarter, and it looks like a ton of fun, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and also the the artwork is just bonkers good mm -hmm. like oh my god you and I kind of messaged about that the other day uh so oh, yeah. again I'll stop talking and please you go ahead sure well puns are always encouraged if you read through the the uh the sample pages you know <laughs> yes yeah. a couple sprinkled in, sprinkled in there and I just, uh, that's, that's hilarious so. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Fernando Pinto is on the book. He's uh, absolutely fantastic. He has this incredible, dynamic, uh, crazy art style that uh, I, I think that when we were scouting for artists, we saw a picture or this uh, this drawing of that he did of just a guy throwing a yo-yo like toward the the reader, and it was so like just the way it was drawn was so dynamic. I was like, this is the guy. I know it. <laughs> And, uh, and I couldn't have been more right, but uh, yeah, Mechaton is uh, kind of a rule of cool sci-fi adjacent comic, uh, very much inspired by things like uh, Gurren Lagann, if you're into anime, or, uh, or Murder Falcon, or, uh, or Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is the, the comic that got me into comics. Uh, Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, I know that's, on, that's the second one, but you know. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, oh, good. Yeah, so the uh, the book is about a glove that gets cast down to Earth, uh, and whoever uh, wields it has the power to uh, punch anything they want and turn it into a mech that they can then uh, pilot to it alter, I guess, wreak havoc, but in this case, uh, punch up uh, giant mutated insects, uh, the, the cost of which is you can't take the glove off, it's bound to you. Uh, and uh, the the person that happens to get it is named Derek. His sister Leah is uh, a backseat gamer. They live together. They're in their uh, like that transitional period of their life where they have no idea how to move forward. They just want to like kind of do something cool, uh, and then something cool falls in their lap. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. How did you uh, when when you had this idea? Was it one of those three in the morning, eyes wide? You're like I've got this idea. Got to find me the first napkin I can write on. Like, where 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 did the where did this come from? Uh, credit where credit is due. The 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 core idea, the initial like punch glove kind of thing, came from uh, my co-writer Dalton. Uh, he was having a conversation with a high school friend, you know, and you know how you just get silly and you just come up with stuff. Uh, they were just trying to hammer some cool ideas out and a lot of them were garbage and then uh, they just kept on coming back to like, you know, the glove that punches stuff and it turns into a mech, that's pretty dope, right? Like, that's yeah. pretty, we could, that has mileage. And then uh, they, they had toyed around with some scripts and by the time it came to me, uh, it was an idea, but it didn't have a lot of direction and I immediately was like, okay, this says a lot. I can I can turn this into a story with that has something to say. And so, you know, like in its core, it's like about improvisation and kind of working with the 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 you know, shitty materials you have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to trying to pull something together out of nothing. And so uh and and it has, you know, and the character spoke to me, it has a lot of heart. Uh I absolutely uh love everything about what it's turned into. And uh yeah no it so the, the the short answer is yeah it was a dumb kind of uh three in the morning conversation where you're just like wouldn't it be awesome if green lantern like had a ring that did, did and it turned into that yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, and then yeah that's very cool it's fun i mean yeah. like ha half the shit we think of <laughs> uh it's usually going to be 
what seems like the most out there idea and mm -hmm. you're like oh well that sucked that's awesome i mean let's let's go for it <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, the the one the one to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna harken back to the uh, to the to the art for a second, and just actually, while well, it plays into obviously the whole creative process uh, mm -hmm. with writers and artists, um, uh, the fact that this glove uh, can change anything. Uh, I do love that this images that you sent me. There were uh, there's the hot dog cart. <laughs> and next thing you know, he's wrapped in this. And, yeah. You know, and he's battling these mutant insects from a hot dog <laughs> cart. Uh, yeah, it's like hot, so it smells like hot dog water in there. It is mm. foul. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I, I like it. to imagine. <laughs> nice. So were you guys, uh, the team, were you guys trying to just come up with, uh, random, like, I mean, you've got, you start with a hot dog cart, but were you trying sure. to come up with just random things? Like, hey, what, what could we maybe turn into something that would look kind of cool? And then how do we translate that to keep that kind of feel of what it used to be to what it is now? Yeah. So a lot of it is, uh, sort of narratively driven uh, what, what winds up getting punched. But we only have a few of them planned out. Uh, and we have, you know, uh, the way we see it, and it could always end up differently, is like there's probably a good 15 to 18 issues of this uh, in us, uh, yeah. of story that we see. Uh, and not to say that there's definitely going to be a different mech every single uh, issue, but there's a lot of potential for <laughs> for stuff to get punched. Uh, yeah. So the hot dog cart made sense to us because it's a really small sort of proof of concept. Uh, you know, you take something that is extremely pedestrian and everyday, and also like uh, just a little leaning on the ridiculous. I don't know why hot dog cart to me just speaks to like a little silly. Uh, maybe it's like the big rainbow umbrella. I don't know. And then, yeah, you, our, our entire thing, the entire, like the first draft of the, the robot that, uh, Fernando came up with our, we agreed was like, the problem was it was too sleek. It was too, mm -hmm. like, it looked like a mech. It didn't look like a shit, like a hot dog cart that got, uh, assembled terribly into something <laughs> that kind of resembles a mech. Yeah. Yeah. And so we had to work on it a little bit just to make it a little bit more rough and like organic looking. Uh, yeah. And then from there, you're like, okay, it's it's a hot dog. Uh, what? <laughs> or it's a hot dog robot. Uh, you know, we we played around with uh, what what kind of weapons does it have? Uh, it has it like a condiment cannon, maybe a bratwurst blaster. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is the it does the like does the umbrella do anything like it you 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 start to just play around with like what are the the elements of it and what can you know you incorporate into it visually to yeah, uh, sure. really make it stand out nice yeah it's it's a ton of fun and uh, again there i go i was gonna say uh you're there's also not just mutant insects but there's battling of i, I was reading through kickstarter the military and wait for it which got me space fascists yeah space fascists because you can't have a rule of cool comic that doesn't end with space fascists. Come on. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> now, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, we wanted to escalate the story in a, in both a very natural and a very, oh, well, you went there. Okay. Kind of way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, again, just going with like what the characters said to me, like what, what, that sounds like a crazy person talking but uh you know what I mean like the way I was like okay this is this has some very clear back you know th this has some very clear theming about like community and coming together and, and and working together for the greater good so I'm like what's the natural enemy of that space fascists uh and uh not to get like too far ahead of the plot or anything but the the glove is a weapon it's it's uh it was stolen from the the main bad guy and he he's gonna want it back at some point uh Ooh. so yeah that's uh that's coming <laughs> yeah but uh I... yeah go ahead no please oh no no i was i uh, didn't mean to cut you off i was gonna say uh when we were talking when we were talking earlier uh, just as we got on the call here um we, you know obviously uh we're just talking about life and, and pandemic and mm -hmm. just everything turned upside down and you had talked about um, just just about the book itself and what led you to Kickstarter, drove you guys to Kickstarter because without naming names, but publishers, <clears throat> excuse me, were feeling the pinch. I mean, like everybody Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and, and I can't blame like, them for that. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so Kickstarter was like, well, this is kind of a great avenue because there's a ton of creator-owned work on there. 
Right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. How has uh, how has jumping over to Kickstarter uh, when you when you started uh, putting together the campaign and and everything else? Uh, which a reminder finishes June nineteenth. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, subtle <laughs> exactly. Date drop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so subtle. Um, anyway, so June nineteenth it finishes. But um, when when you're putting together this campaign and you have the reward tiers and all that kind of good stuff, um, were there any sort of challenges you guys weren't expecting, or was it? It's like, yeah, this actually just makes sense and it's kind of easy to put together and here we go. Uh, I think everything was uh, a bigger challenge than we expected. Um, from uh, just trying to... Uh, tr truly, you kind of have to guess at everything. I, I was very lucky in that uh, I had a bit of a connection to some of the Kickstarter community through uh, Comic Book Yeti, which is uh, a website that I'm, I happen to be the, the content editor of. Uh, and a contributor for yeah no it's yeah, a uh, so but it's it's a comic review site so we yeah. bump into creators from time to time totally. as it happens. Totally. Uh, yeah. but I was able to to talk with some people I'm like how do you you know uh, what are the kind how, how do I do this uh, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing I will say about the Kickstarter community is they are extremely generous uh, with with their time and with their resources uh, but even then you know you're you're only really getting like a view through a hole in the sheet and and doing it yourself uh there's a lot that goes into it so uh estimating costs was a nightmare trying to figure out what the right number was what's you know uh what is too ambitious versus what is you know if we <laughs> like six i i still don't know was six thousand the right number to uh to reach for because yeah. maybe that's too ambitious but then again three thousand might have left us hurting for cash i don't know right. uh so it it was a lot but it was really reward rewarding to go through uh to, I'll, the t the the reward tiers were especially difficult because i'm like what do people once you know what would encourage people to spend more money uh one of the reward tiers we landed on was my family's uh coveted lentil soup recipe because i was truly just like i don't know what to put here it feels like there needs to be something in this tier uh <laughs> and it's it's surprisingly popular uh <laughs> so i'm i'm i was really happy to see that that might have to, to come back if we do a second one uh but yeah, no, I, I have a lot of respect for uh, for creators that not only do Kickstarter, but like continue to come back and do more and more Kickstarters. Uh, it's it's hard work and it's draining. Uh, it's it's uh, a lot of mental like and emotional labor to go out there every day and and try and present your comic in a new way uh, mm -hmm. to sometimes the same people yeah. uh, without you know, seeming like you're begging or without seeming ungrateful or anything. Uh, and uh, and watching the numbers slowly tick up is like, you know, when, when it happens, it's great. And then when it's not yeah. happening, you feel like, oh God, everyone hates me. What was I thinking? No one likes this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the and worst thing ever. <laughs> and then there's that that build of the, it's, it's, I would imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, it would be a constant build of excitement as you work your way through the campaign, you're like, okay, I'm exhausted as shit today, but yeah. I got to put on this face and just push something else out there. Yeah. And I mean, some days got the best to me, I'll say, and the campaign's not over. We may still have more of those days ahead, but I, I feel very positive going forward, but definitely uh, during the middle, during the doldrum, uh, which is like a notorious thing in Kickstarter campaigns is, is the middle is kind of a dead zone. Uh, where no one's really paying attention to you. Uh, sometimes I just had to like step away and spend all day playing Resident Evil 2 and just like <laughs> force myself to not think about it because as soon as I did, it was just downward spiral. <laughs> right, right. Has there, has there anything that's anything so far that's maybe surprised you about putting together this kind of Kickstarter? You mentioned how great the community is that you've reached out to and kind of learned from previously. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that sort of like, hey, that's that's kind of nice. That's a nice little surprise I wasn't <laughs> expecting. And if there isn't, that's okay too. No, I'm. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of our support has come from other uh, Kickstarter creators who are like, "This project looks incredible. I absolutely support you." Like, this is, you know, uh, you would, you'd think there would be more of a competitive atmosphere almost because everyone is, you know kind of theoretically fighting for the same dollars but it's it's not that at all people are extremely 
generous and and caring and like if you have a good product they'll sing your praises all day long and uh you know we pretty much everyone that we reached out to saying hey uh would you mind giving us a boost we're kind of you know we're unknown uh we i don't have a lot of twitter followers or anything this is our first kickstarter we don't have a lot of eyes on us they were immediately like yeah the comic looks great i'll uh, i'll put it in my next update uh and we cool. got to see that happen almost every step of the way like the, the ratio is like 95 percent of people that we sent that message to came back and said of course i will yes yeah uh and i'll back it too because you know i'm just that kind of like <laughs> they're, yeah. I, we didn't even ask them to throw money at it and they did anyway um so yeah, no, I, extremely, extremely generous, loving, giving community uh, that I, I couldn't be happier to be a part of. I love it. Um, I, I want to mention your your previous so work. So our yeah, our, our published work, our only other published work is uh, out of uh, Caliber Comics. Uh, they're really cool to work with. Uh, it's a horror anthology, so uh, we'll probably be uh, promoting it again here come October uh, when the spooky. Uh, comes become becomes relevant again but uh <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh it's uh 12 short stories uh drawn uh by like nine different artists uh with uh some really really fantastic artwork uh in there uh they're all eight pages long uh so in and out and you're never uh you're never in a story for too long they move really quickly it was a great learning process uh process for us because you know figuring out how to like uh tell a story in eight pages really makes you learn the essence of a story and how to <laughs> how to yeah. cut out the bullshit so to speak uh, yeah but uh <clears throat> to highlight some some art that's uh, a story from Serge Acuna one of my favorite right. pages in the entire oh it's uh, gorgeous yeah one of my favorite pages in the entire anthology uh which is uh, about a deep sea diver who discovers uh, a group of mermaids uh, and things go poorly. <laughs> As they but, do. Uh, yeah. I've seen Splash. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, if you're looking for something it. spooky and Mechaton isn't it, The Sentence to Dread is a great alternative. Uh, nice. Sentence to Dread is a lot more all ages. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's any cursing or, but you know, uh, it, it gets as, the, as hardcore as it gets is like stomping on a bug. That's about as, <laughs> as gross as it gets. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, hey, uh, Will Thompson, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Mechaton. Yeah, thank you for me. yeah you're welcome. Mechaton looks so fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, I know you guys are going to reach your goals. You've got, as of today, this recording, you've got six days. Uh, again, does close June 19th. Friday the 18th is the last full day of the Kickstarter. I should mm -hmm. mention that. Uh, so all of you watching this and listening, get to that Kickstarter. Uh, Wells, tell people where they can reach you. Um, and yeah, plug your stuff, please. Yeah, please. Uh, you can find a bunch of my short comics at fourcolormedia.com. Uh, color is with a U. It's the British spelling. Uh, and you can, Canadian spelling. <laughs> and the Canadian spelling, sure enough. Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter uh, at Wells AFP. Uh, and... I don't use a whole lot of others. If you want to follow my cat on Instagram, it's Quaylag the Destroyer. Uh, and uh, at Four Color Fun on Twitter is, uh, is we, we use that less often, but we do announce, uh, sometimes we stream, sometimes we uh, uh, post new comics and the, that, that's usually the avenue we go to to announce those. And you can catch us streaming most Thursdays uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash four color comics again four color is uh color with a u cool. that's great well thanks oh, and sorry oh, and yeah. uh and if you want to see some uh indie comic reviews and see what's hot in the indie comic verse uh four color comics or sorry entirely different thing uh comic book yeti uh is a great uh resource for you i touch just about every article that gets published on there uh and there's some great stuff Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, thank you for having me.